सो हेलो एवरीबडी एंड वेलकम बैक टू अ ब्रांड न्यू वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो कॉल प्रॉब्लम डी डेट इज डिफरेंट सेरे फ्रॉम राउंड एट जीरो एट ऑल्सो द सोल्यूशन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम इज सिंपल इनफ सो द मेन थिंग इज द मैथमेटिकल प्रूफ दैट लीड्स टू द सोल्यूशन सो आई विल भी ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन दैट प्रूफ एंड द प्रूफ डेट आई एम यूजिंग विल भी फ्रॉम दिस कॉमेंट बाई यूज थीम एट डेव एंड यू कैन रीड दिस कॉमेंट एज वेल इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द वीडियो Uh, I will be using the same variable names as him, so you can easily read the uh, comment after you have seen my video, right? So I I will be using the same variable names and I'll be using the same proof, so you can read the comment after uh, after the video, right? So so to understand it better. So let's start with the problem. So in the problem. So in the problem, you have been given an array, right, of around uh, size n, where n is around 10 to the power 5, right, and you have your elements a i, right, and the value of a i is also around 10 to the power 5. Uh, so after one iteration, you will uh, find the difference between the consecutive elements. So you will find a two minus a one, a three minus a two, right? So one up to a n minus a n minus one, right? So you will find a new array of n minus one elements. Right? This is your new array of n minus one elements. You will again sort this array. You will sort this and do this iteration again, right? So then you will le left with the array with n minus two elements, and so on. You will keep applying these uh, iterations. n minus one times, and after n minus one iterations, you will only have a single element left. That is, that will be your answer element, right? And you have to tell this answer element, or you have to find this answer element. So how can we do this? So the mathematical proof that I will give you will prove that in around sixty iterations, in around sixty iterations, there will only be one non-zero element. There will only be one non-zero element, and that will be your answer, right? so that will be your answer so in just 60 iterations you can find your non zero element or your answer so how can we show this uh, also first of all you don't uh, you guys don't need to like uh, find these proofs you, uh, during the contest you can just write a brute force or find some patterns that will help you solve the problem right because it is not viable or not optimal to find these kind of rigorous proofs during the contest right it is not useful at all So, if you are doing a contest and you are stuck at a problem, you are not able to see the patterns. Just write a brute force that will solve a problem using brute force and try to observe some kind of patterns, right? Yeah. So, let's start with the following problem. So, I'm going to start the proof with some assumptions, right? So, I am assuming there will be k non-zero elements. There will be k non-zero elements. That are left after d iterations. That are left after d iterations, and ah, uh, and uh, at every iteration, I will try to find the lexicographically minimal, lexicographically minimal sequence, right? Because we are trying to find a lower bound. We are trying to find a lower bound, right? So if we keep the uh, sequence minimal at every step, it will help us to find the lower bound. so we will find the lexicographically mini minimal sequence and that will help us to find a lower bound so uh, we have k non zero elements so what is the lexicographically minimal k non zero elements that you can have obviously they these are just k ones right so at the dth iteration you just have k ones because that's the lexicographically minimal sequence that you can have of uh, of non zero elements right you have k elements that are just k ones Now let's try to think about the d minus one iteration, right? So if we have one here, what is the lexicographically minimal sequence that could have given us a difference of one? It is obviously zero one, right? And what would have given us one, one uh, again of one? It would be, it would have been one two, so three four so on till k. So you are basically adding adding up these elements, right? You have your one here, you have your one plus one, you have your two here. You have your one, one, one. You have your three here. You have your one, one, one. You have your four here, right? So you are just adding the uh, all the elements in the previous iteration. And if you try to do the same thing for d minus two th iteration, you will have how much? Here? You will have a zero here. You you will have two zeros here. You will have a one here. You will again have a three here. You will have a five here. You will have a nine here, nine here or ten here. 
four three seven. Or you will you will have a six here. Sorry, you will have a six here. You will have a ten here, and so on, right? So again, if you try to find, it is the it is just a sum, right? You we have a one here that is sum of zero comma one. We have a three here that is sum of zero one two. We have a six here it is sum of zero one and three, right? And ten it is a sum of zero one two three four, right? So our last element will be how much? It is just just a sum of first n natural numbers. So it will just be k into k plus one by two factorial. And if we try to think about d minus three eighth iteration, d minus three eighth iteration, it will be three zeros in the beginning, uh, then a one, then a four, uh, then a ten, then a twenty, and so on. And if you try to find the And if you try to find the last element or the or the k k th element of the following sequence online, you will find that the k th element of the following sequence is k into k plus one into k plus two over three factorial. These are called these are called tetrahedral numbers, right? So you can look it up online. Similarly, if we try to think about d m d minus fourth iteration, I am trying to help you see a pattern here, right? So we can try to prove the Thing that we are uh, going to prove. So we have d minus fourth iteration. It will have four zeros, right? It will have a one. It will have a five, fifteen, thirty-five, uh, so on. And these are called pentatope numbers. These are called pentatope numbers. And if you try to find the last element or the kth element of the following sequence, it will be k into k plus one into k plus two into k plus three over four factorial. So I think you are able to see the pattern now, right? We have k into k plus one by two factorial, k into k plus one into k plus two over three factorial, k into k plus one k plus two k plus three over four factorial. So if you go to your first iteration, if you go to your first iteration, the last element of the first iteration, that is your initial a n, will be equal to how much? It will just be. K into k plus one k plus two so on. K plus d minus one over d factorial, right? So that will be your a. And if you see the following term is a little harder to compute, so we will try to find a loose lower bound, right? So that's why uh, that's why we were using the lexicographically minimal sequence, right? Because we are trying to find a lower bound for a, right? So now we know the minimum value, the minimum value of a, the minimum value of a is how much? It is equal to the k into k plus one k plus two up to that one uh, over d factorial, right? So if you try to find a loose bound for this, it will be how much? A n is equal to k into k plus one, k plus two, so on until k plus d minus one over d factorial, right? So we know that uh, k the part d will obviously uh, obviously be less than k into k plus one, so on up to k plus d minus one, right? And d the part d is obviously more than d factorial. So we can like. At, uh, we can use these values and try to create an inequality, right? So we know an is equal to this. So we know an is more than how much? An is greater than equal to k the power d over d the power d, right? Because we know k the power d is less than this this term, and d the power uh, d the power d is more than the following term, right? So k the power d over d the power d will be less than the following term. So we know our an is equal to this, and the following term is more than equal to k the power d over d the power d. So we know our a a the power uh, our an. Our a n is greater than equal to k over d the power d, right? So that's why we are now found a lower bound for a n. So how can we use this to prove that after only sixty iterations, we will only have one non-zero element? So to show this, let's say after k iterations, we will try to find the value of a n that is required to have. We will try to find the value of a n that is required to have. Forty non-zero elements. Forty non-zero elements after twenty iterations. After twenty iterations, so that is our k is equal to forty and our d is equal to twenty. If you try to uh, assign these values to k and d, the value of a n will come out to be how much? A n is greater than equal to forty over twenty. So it will be twenty here. So we will get how much? Will you will get two the part twenty? A n is greater than two the part twenty. So a n is more than ten the part six, right? So a n is more than ten the part six. 
So if your value of a n is greater than equal to ten to the power six, then you will have forty non-zero elements. Forty non-zero elements after twenty iterations. After just twenty iterations. But as you can see here, that in the problem, our max value of a a is how much? Our max value of a is around five to ten to the power five. So we will hit these forty non-zero elements even faster. So we will hit these forty non-zero elements even faster. So you won't even need twenty iterations for this. You will hit forty non-zero elements in just like eighteen or nineteen iterations, right? So now you know if you start with n elements, if you start with n elements, after just twenty iterations, after just twenty iterations, you will hit. You will hit forty non-zero elements. You will hit forty non-zero elements, and all your rest of elements, right? That is n minus forty elements around, right? Around n the part uh, n minus forty elements will be all zeros. So now you have forty non-zero elements. So you will just need thirty-nine more iterations, thirty-nine more iterations to find a single non-zero element. To find a single non-zero element, or your answer. So how many iterations are we using? So we are using twenty iterations here, and we are using around forty iterations here, right? So we are just using sixty iterations. In so in sixty iterations, around sixty iterations, you will get your answer. So as you can get your answer in only in, in only sixty iterations, uh, you can just write a brute force for this. So the solution is simple enough. So the solution is just write a just use brute force. So now let's see if the brute force solution is simple, or uh, if the brute force solution is uh, enough, or we have to use some optimizations. So if you try to find the complexity of the following solution, we are using around log c iterations. We are using around log c iterations, and at every iteration we will compute and sort the array. So sorting the array takes n log n complexity, right? So our total complexity will be how much? N log n into log c. Uh, log c is around twenty. Uh, uh, log n is also around twenty, and n is around ten to the power five, right? So you can see your solution is kind of reaching uh, reaching ten to the power eight. So the solution might be early. So you need to like uh, do some kind some kind of optimization to save this from TL. So uh, how can we optimize this? So if you try to see here, you are sorting for every iteration, right? You are sorting. You are using n log n complexity. For uh, you are using n log n complexity for sorting each array, right? But it, it but it is not very useful, right? Why? Because after just twenty uh, iterations, you will have n minus forty zeros, right? So you are just wasting your time sorting those n minus forty zeros. So instead of sorting those zeros, you can just keep a counter for these zeros and just sort these forty elements, right? And just sort these forty elements. So the optimization is. So the optimization is. Write a brute force. So the optimization is write a brute force, but keep frequency of zeros and keep frequency of zeros, and that will help you save the TLE. Right. Also, uh, the following bound n log n log c uh, is not the strict bound. The strict the strict bound for this is O of n log c, but I am not going to show that here. You can read the comment uh, right for that, and he has explained it uh, like really well. Like uh, you can easily show that the bound is O of uh, n log c, right? Yeah. So the solution is simply simply enough. Just write a brute force and keep a frequency of zeros, and you will very soon reach just your answer. That is, in just sixty iterations, you will find your answer. So I think the uh, the rest is just implementation. So if you guys want to see the code for this, so uh, here's my code. So I'm taking my array here and I'm sorting the array in reverse order. Why so? Because I will have my array something like this in the end. I will have something like this. Ten, eight, seven, and zeros in the end, right? So like it is easier to pop. From the back, right? So uh, I I I want to remove these zeros, right? So it is easier to pop from the back. So I am using the array sorted sorted in reverse order. So here here I am keeping a count zero, 
and uh, while the array is not empty and my last elements that are these are zeros i will increase my counter and i will pop these elements right because it is easier to pop from the uh, back in vectors and if v dot size is equal to zero that is all the elements in the array array was zero and then my answer is zero itself that is there is not any non the answer that you were uh, looking for is zero itself right so we will just see out zero otherwise if v dot size is equal to one that is there is only one non zero element left now that all the elements that you popped were zeros and now the now only one element is there that is non zero then your answer is just v of zero otherwise if there are there are more than one non zero elements we will try to find the new array so i will just iterate over the whole array and create a new array of uh, of the difference between consecutive elements and uh, i will check if my count of zero is more than zero if there if there is a zero element that will also create a new difference so i will also add that here right and i will and i will remove a zero otherwise i will just uh, directly uh, sort my uh, array in reverse order and i will just swap the v and the temporary array right so i'm just like uh, doing the iterations you know in a brute force manner uh, there is like not anything like special here yeah so that is the code and if you guys have a doubt do ask me in the comments and again as i said you guys don't need to prove uh, these in the contest during the contest you you can just write a brute force and try to observe some patterns and i think that will help in the longer run yeah so that was it for the following video and I will see you guys in the next one. Also, if you guys don't know, Continue Newton School is offering a full stack development course. The course is uh, over six months long, and it is totally based on pay after placement model. And you don't have to pay anything. There is zero hidden fees. There is zero upfront fees, and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees five lakhs. And the average package is rupees seven lakhs, and the highest package is over rupees twenty six lakhs. So it is a very great opportunity. Also, all their mentors are from top MNCs like Google, Flipkart, Zomato, etc. Also, they will get you placed into the top MNCs as well, like Google, Flipkart, Zomato. Uh, so uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies, and you can land a job at those companies yourselves. Also, you don't need to worry if you guys think that yeah, I'm not coding, 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 I'm not so you can still sign up for this and if you guys are looking for a career in the tech field this is a very uh, this is a very great head start that you should sign up for and if you uh, want to land a job i highly uh, i highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be link down below and you can go and sign up from there so yeah you know, be sure to sign up for this and i will see you in the next video bye bye